Yes, that's right. I have added custom structures into the game and before you ask, yes, they spawn naturally and yes, this is 1.10, so I am using the structure block and that shouldn't be here. So this tutorial is going to be about how to naturally generate structures in your own world. I've done tutorials like this in the past, but I've come up with a much better method since then. So that's what we're going to be exploring. Before we do that, let's just take a look around and you can see that there's... I think these ones are actually connected. If we keep moving around though, you'll see another one spawn soon. You can see exactly where all the armor stands are. There are very, very few of them. Uh, let's keep moving on and hopefully we'll see one appear. There we go right in front of our face. Whoa, whoa, I think I've maxed out the size here. Uh, so let's just take a look. You can see all the rooms are unique in their own way. And yeah, I think it's pretty cool. They even come with their own custom mobs and there's not even a single spawner in here. So let's get to the tutorial. Let's talk about how the structures naturally generate before we talk about the generation itself. As you can see, armor stands are being spread around the map, but not with spread players. We're also doing this in such a way that very, very few armor stands are used. The armor stands are there in the first place so they can detect where they can put the structures in the first place. Here's a small scale representation. We have one armor stand right here. And now if there's bedrock underneath it, it will summon in a redstone block. Now for all armor stands that have a redstone block, it will summon in an armor stand in the east direction. And then all armor stands will summon a redstone block underneath them. And then, if there's bedrock in the same direction, it will summon an armor stand in the west direction. After that, it will summon in a redstone block to say, I've been here. And then, it's going to summon in a armor stand in the south direction, but only if there's bedrock there. And then set down some redstone blocks. And then it's going to do the same thing for the north direction. Only if there's bedrock there will it summon in armor stands. And then it will summon in the redstone blocks. Now here comes a very crucial part. All the redstone turns into obsidian. Okay, now let's repeat the process again. So we're summoning in in the east direction and then setting the bedrock to redstone. Notice how the obsidian stays the same. We do the same thing for the west direction and then we summon in our redstone blocks yet again. And then if there's bedrock there, we summon them in in the south direction. And then of course, to say that we've already been here, we put in our redstone blocks. And then we do the same thing for the opposite side. So we summon in our armor stands only if there's bedrock there and then place a redstone block underneath them. But then the important part, all armor stands on the obsidian will be killed off. And as you can see, the cycle can continue. Also keep in mind that this process only happens if the armor stand is within 80 blocks of the player's X and Z axes. This is to stop this process from happening in unloaded chunks and potentially breaking the system. Okay, now let's go over how to implement the dungeons using a very simple method. Let's give ourselves a structure block like so and let's set it to save mode and we'll set the dimensions or the structure size of this one. Let's just change this relative position, just how you like it. I'm just doing this for the sake of example and change the structure size to maybe this and it will generate a wireframe of where the structure is. So it doesn't really go below this point here. Okay, so let's just create a really, really basic structure. Okay, now once that's done, we save the structure. Let's go structure one, for instance. Check if you want to include entities or not. If you want custom mobs, then turn this on. But we're just going to save the structure for now. And let's copy this and do another one over here. Let's call this one structure two. And then maybe one more over here called structure three. It's important to note that all the dimensions, the X and Z, axes must be the same otherwise you'll end up with a messy looking dungeon. Okay so I now have three structures lapis, diamond and emerald. If I place down a structure block and go into load mode let's change the relative position to suit us and we'll say structure one and if you click load and then load again you'll see it's lapis and if we change it to structure two click load it's diamond and then structure three, it turns into emerald, which is exactly what we want. 
And also, don't forget, you can also power these. And this is going to be important because we will be setting a redstone block on top of the structures in order to summon them in. Remember our armor stands, they're going to come into play now. Now if an armor stand detects a block in a certain position, let's say granite, three blocks above it, then it will set in a structure block, and then it will set in a redstone block. Now make sure the mode is set to load and the structure type is set to the type of structure you want. After you set in the redstone block, the structure will automatically be added to your world. Oh, but Dragon, your dungeons look so much more complicated than the ones that you provided in the example. What gives? Well, that will need another tutorial, which I have already made actually. Right here, annotation, card, one of the two, link in the description as well. You can see how you can add custom dungeons. Now, all you really have to do with that method, works in 1.9 and 1.10, is just change the fill commands to set block commands with structure blocks, keeping in mind you set in the structure block and the redstone block at the same time. Thanks everyone for watching, I will see you in the next one. Take care.